Dateline Wednesday, August 28, 1963 The case for taking UFO seriously By this time it has grown very difficult for a writer to make any case for UFOs unidentified flying objects uh, In a newspaper letter, most of the public has forgotten about flying objects UFOs are still sighted as frequently as ever but sightings have lost their news value and currently rate very little space. Let me therefore explain that the term unidentified flying object was coined by the late Captain Edward J. Ruppelt, former director of the Air Force investigation. To replace the name Flying Saucer a title which has caused about half of the ridicule. Day by day the task confronting a civilian commentator grows ever more challenging. Official secrecy on the UFO topic still prevails in the United States and in most foreign countries. Our national magazine as well as evidenced by Newsweek for August 5. 1963 print only the most prejudiced articles. In spite of all these difficulties, however, a small section of the American public remains vitally interested. I write not for these, but for people who have long since concluded that the UFO subject is an exploded issue. Readers may judge for themselves the extent to which the following three eases demonstrate the reality of the UFO. At 9.40 p.m., July 29, 1952, an unknown object began to make blips on an air defense radar scope in central Michigan. Early plottings showed that the UFO was moving at a 625 mile per hour clip, heading due south across Saginaw Bay on Lake Huron. Ground radar instantly called an F-94 fighter on a nearby practice maneuver and ordered an intercept. Swiftly the F-94 pilot climbed to an elevation of 20,000 feet, bearing to the right, as directed by ground radar control, both the pilot and his radar operator visually spotted a large bluish white light. As the fighter approached, the light suddenly acquired a reddish tinge and moved away at high speed. At this point ground radar told the interceptor that the target had reversed its direction, swinging through a tight 180 degree turn. The maneuver was too close for a jet and at this speed the object would have to be a jet if it was an airplane. As the UFO sped away to the north the F-94 put on maximum speed for the chase. In the back seat, the air radar operator quickly located the object on his scope. Later he said, it was just as solid a lock-on as you get from a B-36. The F-94 gained slowly, but when the gap had narrowed to less than 4 miles the UFO, clearly visible to the pilot suddenly accelerated and pulled out of air radar range. The light brightened noticeably when it picked up speed, and ground control reported that the target had almost doubled its velocity in one sweep of the radar antenna. For ten minutes ground control followed the maneuvers. Ground radar, air radar, and the pilot's visual reports tallied perfectly. Repeatedly the jet closed the distance, only to have the UFO put on a sudden burst of speed and flash away. Several times it was seen to move about 4 miles in a 10 second sweep of the antenna, this meant a speed of 1400 miles per hour. Finally the jet ran short of fuel and broke off the chase. Captain Ruppelt, in his published account of the sighting, wrote, the incident. Dot was one of those that even the most ardent skeptic would have difficulty explaining. I've heard a lot of them try and I've heard them all fail. Case number two is an airliner sighting. On July 11, 1959, a group of airline crews saw a cluster of brilliant lights during a night flight over the Pacific. Given by Captain George Wilson and First Officer Richard Lawrenson, bound on a DC-7 flight from San Francisco to Honolulu. Several bright lights appeared suddenly out of nowhere, heading for the plane on a straight collision course. Almost at the last moment they veered sharply to the right and vanished at high speed. The period of observation was about 10 seconds. Captain Wilson stated in his report, it could have been one very large object with bright center lights and small ones surrounding or separate objects. The lights came toward us faster than anything I've ever known. Then the formation or the object made a sharp right turn. The speed was inconceivable for any vehicle we, we knew of. After the turn, it disappeared to the south. Dot. I never believed those flying objects existed, but I'm a believer now. His report was substantiated by a U.S. B-50 bomber crew 
a slick airways cargo plane, the crews of two other Pan American airline flights, and a Canadian Pacific airliner. Captain Lloyd Moffat, pilot of the Canadian Pacific flight, told the press, You can take it from me, they were there. I never saw anything like it in my life. The third case before me is a Hawaiian sighting with the date of March 11, 1963. The UFO was first spotted by jet pilots of the Hawaiian Air National Guard, who were flying at about 40.000 feet under excellent visibility conditions. The UFO looked somewhat like a missile it left a tenuous vapor trail in its flight path. Captain Jonathan Parrish said it was possibly a rocket or some sort of space object. Thousands of people watched it from the ground. At Honolulu, the observers at the Federal Aviation Agency Control Tower had a good look at it. An far spokesman said that it looked like a searchlight moving at high speed, with a beam fanning out behind it. He summed up, it was no aircraft, and I know no one who knows what it was.